Let, let's start off with that, Chris. Is that good with you? Yeah, come on. Let's do it. The Jets have traded quarterback Sam Darnold, uh, which I think pretty much sums up that Zach Wilson is going to be number two. It's what we all long believed, but it is, it's done. He's out of there. And they traded him to the Carolina Panthers, who hold the number eight pick in this year's draft. The Jets are reportedly getting a sixth-round pick in 2021, a second-round pick, and a fourth-round pick in 2022 out of the deal. Basically, it's what you like to call a bag of chips, right? Yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's a second-round pick next year, and then, uh, you know, a bunch of bites at an apple that's already had a lot of bites taken out of it. Yes. This is a great deal for the Panthers, I think. They they were not going to be able to get Deshaun Watson, or, or they didn't want him anymore. They were not going to well, be able yeah, to that, get Russell Wilson. Um, they weren't going to get a franchise guy, so then you go into it thinking, okay, we can try and draft you know, Mac Jones or maybe Trey Lance will still be around or whatever, or we can go get a guy that is more mature that we don't have to spend an eighth round or a, a number eight pick on, a first-round pick, and we can still get a really good value in that number eight slot. And now we got a guy to come in and compete with Teddy Bridgewater. We got two quarterbacks that are talented yep. that we can maybe find something to do with them. Two I like first this. Round guys that that have had sparks of of flashes of 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 genius genius and and sparks of uh, of showing that they can be the guy, but have had a lot of issues and problems either maintaining that or whatever. It's it's really easy to give Sam Darnold a blanket just pass on his whole career so far with as inept the Jets have been. There is a world where Sam Darnold is as bad as advertised. Okay, that yes. world realistically could be could exist. It's worth the second round pick to see if that's the case or not, because one of these rookies could be just as big of a crapshoot as Sam Darnold. The difference is is. There's a chance that you could you could get Sam Darnold in this deal and sign him to a contract for two or three years. It's pretty cheap and reasonable, and he didn't cost you that first round pick. And now you can use. Here's the deal: they weren't going to be able to trade up with the Falcons, okay, for the fourth pick to get the next quarterback. And if they did, they would be getting the fourth quarterback option, which there's a world in which that guy could be the best out of all of them, depending on who it is and how it all works out. But I just, I think this is a better route. Now you can use that eighth round, that eighth uh, overall pick on, I think, an asset that's going to be amazing because so many people are jumping up top for quarterbacks. Yes. Yes. I'm, I agree. I, I think that this was a genius move. Yes. Uh, one that, because we've seen it before, right? It has proven Ryan Tannehill with Adam Gase was not very good. He goes to a different organization, different offensive coordinator, and all of a sudden, he's he's a franchise quarterback. He's not the best franchise quarterback, but obviously you can do things with him. They've made the playoffs with him two years in a row. They made a run last year with him at quarterback. He was He's a successful quarterback. That's, that's what right. Ryan Tannehill is without Adam Gase. If you if you move, and that's, that's just at Miami, you had Gase and the Jets together, which is just a complete dumpster fire. Sam Darnold, if he moves out of there and you put him with an offensive mind like Joe Brady, who showed last year that even with not very much, he can come up with something, right? At Teddy Bridgewater and, and Christian McCaffrey together, they were able to, to pull as much potential out of that into, into realism as humanly possible last year, I feel like. That was a really no, well-coached team. And that offense was good last year. That offense yes. really wasn't a problem. Their defense started – I really think their defense started like seven rookies, okay? Oh, it did. They, and, they, they were the first team in, in what, like more than two days – or maybe the first team ever to only draft defensive draft rookies. players? Yeah, they, they spent – I think they had nine or 11 draft picks – Last year, I don't remember how many total. They spent everyone on defensive players. They started like six or seven of those guys out of the 11 starters. And, um, and yeah, it, it took them a long time because defense is one of those things where unless you're just a pass rusher and you're a freak athlete, you don't come in the league and just immediately know how to play the game. Okay. Route running, covering a cornerback, covering a, a wide receiver, playing cornerback in the, in the NFL takes a couple of games of getting used to, oh, shit. This, this speed is different. 
Yes. This be, you know, I used to be the fastest guy on the team and now, you know, I might be, I might still be the fastest guy on the field, but, but I'm not it, the quickest anymore. <laughs> the guy that I'm going against knows what he's doing. And so I have to take some time to learn that the linebackers, especially have to learn those positions. It took them a little while. This offense was rolling pretty good, even without McCaffrey, which is why, you know, how I feel about these things. I would just, I know it's hard to let them go. But there's no way I'd spend that much money on a running back. I oh, just, I I just go find another running back, man. I understand. I, I get it. Uh, Taylor jumps in. He told you it's uh, time to buy a Nick Castellanos jersey. Castellanos, is that is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it was a fun weekend. Uh, no. Brad's crazy life. I think Sam is a B plus, uh, excuse me, B plus player. Uh, and then Ryan McCracken, Jets logic is to draft a quarterback every three years. Every uh, three years. It, it hasn't not changed. Fix the problem. Like, Let's just keep replacing this one thing over and over and over again. That has taken a guy that has never made pizza before in his life and who doesn't know how to follow a recipe and just replacing the oven every year. Okay. Let's buy this $50,000 <laughs> pizza oven from Italy. Oh, that didn't work. Well, let's buy another one. No, let's not replace the chef. Let's not try to get some better flour. Let's not try to get good water. Let's not get make sure our yeast is good. Let's not actually make our ingredients good. Let's take the most important thing and the most expensive thing, and let's just keep turning it out over and over and over again in hopes that maybe we can get one that's magic. <laughs> I like the magic idea. <laughs> McKinnon jumps in. Think we're fixing to see Donald's real potential. I still say he's severely underrated, and no yep. one was going to look good under the Jets' leadership that was there. The I, one thing I do yep. hate is I actually like Teddy Bridgewater as a quarterback. I think he's good. I, I'm very curious to see in a camp, in a full camp that I think we're going to get in the NFL this year, Head, to, I'm really glad this happened before the draft. I'm There's no reason that him and Teddy shouldn't both have access to the same playbook. Both have access to the same guys. I want to see what happens in camp, who wins this quarterback battle, because I actually still like Teddy Bridgewater a lot. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on that. I I do wonder just a little bit what this means for Mac Jones. Uh, because, of course, last week all the talk was the 49ers are going to take Mac Jones. I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I, it wouldn't surprise me one way or another. But I, I could see Mac Jones now going anywhere from three to late first. I mean, anywhere around there, it could be possible because it was widely thought that you had to get above the Panthers to be able to grab Mac Jones because everybody thought that the Panthers were going to take him there. And and now if they've got Sam Darnold, they just spent some draft capital to get him, there's no way that they draft a quarterback at eight, right? Well, no, no, no. They're out of yeah. the quarterback business for this draft. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that they wouldn't necessarily trade that eighth pick. Uh, but I don't think the eighth pick is going to have any value. I think so. There's been a lot of talk that the the Falcons might be shopping the four pick um, if they are not completely. So I I've made it clear I don't think they're taking the quarterback. Their new contract says the way rookies work, you would basically waste the whole rookie deal on somebody. All of your years of cheap quarterback on on drafting the guy and letting him sit behind Matt Ryan for the next two to three years, which is what that contract says we're gonna do the way they've structured it with Ryan. I don't think I don't think they're in the business of quarterback this year. Um so there there talks about if they don't take Pitts, which a lot of people are leaning them to take, trading it away because somebody might make them a, a Super Bowl offer for a quarterback pending three quarterbacks go the top three. There are four quarterbacks in this draft. Do I want you know, to take a chance on that guy falling to me, or do I go up and get him? It's a, and it's that a doesn't matter question. who it is. I mean, it could be Lance Lynn left sitting there. It could be it could be Field sitting there, but but somebody is going to 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 spend a fortune, I think, to get up and and go get that guy. Um, is is what I believe, and and so I don't think eight has a has a value to trade back at all. Um. So well, you, th- you never know. Like, say Panay Sewell is still sitting there at eight for whatever reason. Uh, if somebody wanted to trade up for that, uh, say Trey Lance or Mac Jones or somebody is still sitting there and the Broncos decide that they want to go and get their quarterback. Yeah, they, but the Broncos pick ninth. I mean, what? what uh, agreed, agreed. But you know, uh, yeah, yeah you'd, you'd be mad if if you didn't trade up, but you don't want to pull a you don't want to pull pull a Ryan Pace here. You agreed. don't you don't want to give away extra first round picks, which is what you would have to give up by the way to do that to move up one spot because you think somebody else might jump in front of you. 
you got to have multiple plans for multiple things. I I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree. This is this is mayhem. I'm glad that we're getting these deals done well ahead of the draft. Me too. So that we can at least have time to talk about it and dissect it, you know? Well, yeah, you can kind of start strategizing of what the draft's going to look like instead of draft day trades. Uh, here, here's, the, here's the other thing that I that I think about, too. I, li- I mean, I've said this before. I like the idea of keeping the pick if you're eight because you're not a team like the Bengals that have a ton of needs, okay? You're not. I think because all of the – if we just drafted players based on their merit, just based on their ranking and not their position of who's the best athlete on the field, you you have I – think, I think out of all the quarterbacks, as much as I like all these quarterbacks, outside of Trevor, none of them should be top ten players. I think there are nine other athletes in this draft that are more important to winning football games. They just don't play quarterback. OK, yeah. And so if you're around six, seven, eight, I think you're just getting dudes that should have never been there before fall to you. OK, I, yes. And yes. I think that's valuable. The Bengals, it doesn't help so much because I think they have a lot of needs. Yes, they okay? have. And I think their needs are tackle. I think there's a lot of damn good tackles in this draft. And if they could punt back and get an extra first round pick. I absolutely think they could still lock up tackle and get the extra first round pick to build on the future later. And I mean, the the big thing for the Bengals also would have to be their guard position, like they, they the interior of their line. Well, the any of these issue. offensive linemen coming out of college that are big time tackles can play guard. Not all guards can play tackle. Every tackle, I think, can play guard. Yeah. Uh, who was the guy that they just signed? Uh, Riley. Um, I uh, forget the guy's name. I, he's he's a tackle. They've got Jonah Williams that's going to be back at tackle. I, I wonder about the Bengals. We're we're doing like a whole mock draft. Hey, you know we need to do that sometime. Like in the next couple of weeks, why don't we just sit and do a live show that's just a, a mock draft? I don't I don't I hate mock drafts. I don't know, but it, it's kind of uh, we know we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about predictions and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, we we've still got a ton of stuff to hit on. We've already spent fifteen minutes on. Uh, on Sam Darnold. On one thing we didn't think we were going to hit on. Yeah, no, so. right? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.